questions. So welcome to the latest supporters update. It is already July 2022 uh, and we are now only a couple of weeks away from Common Ground and very excited. This evening uh, there's me, Debs uh, Woodcroft Oak CEO and I'm joined by our Chair of General Council. Would you like to say hello Aggie? Yes, hello everyone. Um, I'm Aggie and it's nice to see all of you today. And during the session, uh, the reason why we have these and we have these once a quarter is to keep all of our members and supporters updated with what's happening across the network. We're going to try and encourage and enthuse you uh, to make sure that you continue to be engaged uh, and maybe even step up your engagement. Although I do realize that some people on this call are very busy and very much involved in Woodcroft Oak activities on a local and national level. Uh, we are hoping to get your feedback and suggestions uh, and also to respond to any questions that you may have either from what we're sharing today or questions that you might have about the broader uh, work of Woodcroft folk. So we're going to cover a little bit about the Champions for Children campaign that we ran last month. Um, tell you a little bit more about some new funding and some new projects that we're proud of very little on common ground actually unless you have specific questions uh, aggie is going to share some of our international work and we've been really pleased to return to international work after the last two years of covid disruptions uh, a little bit about some news from our centers and our groups and some events that you can participate in over the next few months as i said at any point you can interrupt aggie and i with some questions that you might have um, but I'm going to start with the Champions for Children. This is the first time Woodcraft Folk has ever done a match funding campaign on a national level and we were really really pleased so I want to say a big thank you to everybody who supported the campaign whether or not they shared it on social media or made a donation. We raised over 13 and 13 and a half thousand pounds um, which is pretty awesome I think uh, for a two-week campaign. We had a 500 pound contribution from the Communication Workers Union. Interestingly, from one of their regional development officers, who when I first met him, told me that Woodcraft folk had made him who he was. And he recounted many tales of Woodcraft folk camps in his youth. Uh, so it was lovely uh, that he was able to support our campaign in recognition for Woodcraft folk's contribution in making him such a good trade unionist. The campaign uh, for Champions for Children was supported by individuals, but also by the Ronald Ross uh, Primary School. And the Ronald Ross School had benefited from Woodcraft Folk's school outreach work during last term. And they hosted a drop down day and raised some money for us as part of the campaign. Now, the campaign will be providing 25 play out days across London, as well as five residentials at Cudham over the next 12 months. So we're really pleased uh, with that campaign. So much so that I'll give you a sneak preview. We've signed up for a Christmas campaign. So watch this space, I'm talking about the C word in July is terrible. Um, other news, we were very successful in a application to the Royal Society of Chemistry. For those of you who were at pre-camp, you'll remember the dirty, smelly diesel generator that caused us lots of stress. Uh, as a result of that, there was a conversation and within three days of coming back from camp, we submitted an application to the Royal Society of Chemistry to provide more solar energy and to teach our young people about the chemistry of batteries. Uh, our grant was successful. And as I was saying before we started this, my house is now full of lots of batteries and solar panels, which we will take to camp and work with young people to build some solar systems for villages. Uh, we've also recently submitted some applications to the National Lottery Community Fund to do some development work at Cuddam and to the National Youth Organisations of Scotland Fund, which as the name suggests, is about doing some work uh, for our volunteers in Scotland. So that will provide some new leader training and opportunities for the groups and districts there to get together. Other news, um, we have been trying to re-engage some of our trade unions since we appointed our new fundraiser at the end of April. And CC has been trying to get people to affiliate to Woodcroft Oak 
and successfully we have had affiliations from the Fire Brigades Union, Unite, Unison and the National Education Union. We've had a brand new affiliation from the salary the salaried staff, the transport salaried staff association, I'll get that in the right order. Um, and we are keen to encourage our members and supporters to reach out to their own trade unions and branches uh, to encourage more affiliations. If this is something that you're interested in, please contact CC at fundraising at woodcraft.org.uk or drop me a message and I can put you in touch. So that is some really good news and that provides some unrestricted funding to Woodcroft folk so that we can do more work with our volunteers. Uh, other project news is that we have been delivering the Reignite project across London and that's working with five boroughs to reopen groups that have struggled since Covid. That piece of project funding is funded by the Jack Petchy Foundation uh, and we've also had an extension to our Green Influencer Scheme which is working with schools in Bradford and Leeds and here is a picture of the makings of a school garden at one of the Carp Academy Trust schools uh, up in uh, West Yorkshire and we're really pleased that that project will now continue until June 2023. Right I'm handing over to Aggie to talk about group news. Nice thank you so much Debs. Yes so as all COVID restrictions have been lifted, we have seen a huge increase in public inquiries um, for people interested in the Woodcraft folk. Um, we are delighted to have opened new groups in Bermondsey, Hornsey, Wivenhoe and White City. Um, and our membership team are also supporting the development of new groups in Hastings and Wharton Forest. Um, and you can see where we have the inquiries here on the screen, Feltham, Sheffield, Conway, Putney, Redham, Oh, it's lots of uh, fun words that I can't pronounce. East, Lothian and Chesterfield. So everyone's interested. Um, following the success of Dream Big at Home, our development staff have also been testing opportunities for young people to engage who do not participate in a traditional group. Our first remote members residentials took place at the end of last year. Um, and last month we saw the first Camps for All in which all young participants were new to Woodcraft Folk. We have other events planned in Lockerbrook and Cuddam this year, which is very exciting. Um, we're not saying a lot about common ground, as Deb said, um, but obviously it is coming up and none of us can wait. Um, there'll be loads and loads of campers, around 2,600 from 25 different countries. And we have the Family and Friends Open Day on the 6th of August. Um, so if you have any family or friends who aren't already coming to the camp, you can uh, invite them along. Uh, we are still looking for some volunteers to support with stewarding, friends and family open day and driving around during working week. But mostly we're just excited. Uh, and then, excited and busy, I think, is the answer. Uh, the number of conversations I've had about cables, lighting, food, how difficult it is to get naan bread, but we've, we've found a solution. Uh, sorry to interrupt, go on, Aggie. No problem. On that note, though, I would like to say a quick thank you to all of the staff members and all of the volunteers who have been doing so much work on Common Ground, um, as I feel like I'm emailing people every day and seeing the amount of work that has gone in for some people for years, for some people for less time, but all so valuable is amazing. So thank you, everyone who's been doing that. Um, but yes, back we are back with international activity. Um, we have seen which is really exciting. Um, I personally was facilitating um, an IFM project called Change Makers of Tomorrow in Barcelona, where we had some young people from Woodcraft Folk, and we also had some other young people doing good governance with Journey for Youth Leadership, another project looking at how we can encourage youth participation in the governance structures of our organization. Um, we are also delighted to be hosting a, a big team um, of European Solidarity Corps volunteers um, at Common Ground um, in Working Week and on the camp, um, and to have loads and loads of projects happening at Common Ground, such as Impact, Kids Got Rights, Journey for Youth Leadership, and Peace Communicators. And then, of course, we've had young people in Portugal, I believe, last week. It, they um, came back Monday, so yes, very recently. For Winds of Change, which was an exchange program. Uh, so it's really nice. We are once again in the wider world. 
um, which feels like it's been a long time, but is really, really, really exciting. Uh, I'll hand back to you, Deb. Cool. Uh, and on that European Solidarity Corps thing, when, when Aggie says a big team, we've got 20 young people who are coming for four weeks to help set up deliver and then take down common ground uh, and they're coming from seven different countries across Europe so that's a really exciting uh, opportunity to host those volunteers and they of course join Louisa who's currently volunteering at Lockerbrook, Ava who's supporting activity in communications, Sandra who many of you will have met um, who's supporting common ground and we're very soon to be joined by Sarah who will be helping support activity at Cuddam and Biblins. So we're really excited to be part of the European Solidarity Corps scheme and hope that we can find a replacement in the future. Um, talking about centres, now there's, there's some news for you. So we are doing a relaunch of Highgate. Highgate has had a change of staff. Andy Worcester joined us last month and he's been busy working to update the centre and bring it up to the standards that we would expect. Uh, if you haven't been, I really encourage you to go. I have to admit, until earlier this year, I hadn't visited. It is in a stunning location and there's so much space. So do have a look. You can camp there or you can be inside. Um, so the best of both worlds. Um, in terms of visitor numbers, we've had over 25,000 visitors this year up to the end of June. So that's looking really positive. Our centres are a little quiet this summer, partly because most of us are at common ground, uh, but it looks like we are returning to uh, figures that we would have expected before the pandemic. Um, so they are looking healthy in terms of their income with over 300,000 pounds already committed to the centres in terms of uh, fees for their, for their overnight stays and that's across all of the centre networks so Cuddam and Biblins and Lockerbrook as well as Highgate. We're also really pleased with the level of volunteer engagement at all of our sites it remains really really strong. We this year started a monthly volunteering session at Biblins uh, which matches very similar the weekly sessions that already take place at Cuddam all of our centres would welcome more volunteer wardens. So if you fancy staying, but not having the responsibility of other people's children and young people, consider becoming a warden at one of our centres. You can come for one night or you can come for 10. The choice is yours. Um, I've already mentioned our ESE volunteers and we're very, very grateful for the experience that they bring to our centres. All of our centres this summer are also encouraging family bookings. This is something that we started to do during COVID when we weren't permitted to bring youth groups to the site. So Lockerbrook has its three bed cottage, which is now able for families and friends to book. Cuddam will be uh, allowing guests to use its bungalow this summer. And we have camping at Biblins. You can bring alone your own tent or you can use one of the bell tents from Camp Kudu. Uh, and as I've already said, Highgate will be relaunching this summer for both camping and indoor barn activities. Uh, so look out uh, and there's really good availability, particularly at Highgate for the autumn for your groups. A bit of news about staff changes. There have been less staff changes in the last few months than there were at the beginning of the year, I'm pleased to say. Uh, Kay returned to work after her period of maternity leave, which meant we said goodbye to Adam, who has been providing cover for the last few months. Leanne continues to be on maternity leave and is doing well. Uh, so Grace, many of you have had contact, is uh, providing maternity cover to the membership and groups post and Grace, we're expecting to stay with us until next spring. Uh, we're not currently recruiting and we're not currently expecting any other staff changes. So the team have settled. Um, this week, we've celebrated 12 months since Andy uh, Taylor joined us as the new head of centres. And we're soon to celebrate two years since Richard uh, Burgess Gamble joined us as head of resources, which seems to race past really quickly. Um, but uh, it's really, pleased that we're also heading for our first face-to-face -face staff conference in September after Common Ground, which will be taking place at Cuddam. So I look forward to telling you all about that after the event. 
Which brings me on to events, opportunities for you to engage in uh, Woodcroft Oak. Of course, there's Common Ground, and I expect to see most of you there. During Common Ground, we will be hosting our annual general meeting on the afternoon of the 3rd, which is open to all volunteers and young people. This year, we're doing it a bit different. Uh, we are asking for the workshop facilitators at Common Ground to support the young members to identify topics that they would like to discuss. We still will have uh, the voting on the traditional things like the annual report, which was shared with groups last week. Um, and uh, we will have uh, the elections of our general council members and our standing orders committee. Other dates which I would really like your help in sharing is that we have a young leaders training event at Cuddam. This event is free to all of our young members and it's taking place the 2nd to the 4th of September. Not September's as it reads there, uh, which will be followed very shortly after for a leader training open to all ages, which will be taking place at Lockerbrook at the very end of September. Unfortunately, due to the rail strikes, we found ourselves having to postpone the Spanning the World with Friendship Symposium, which was due to happen in June at UCL. That will now be taking place on the 8th of October. And we're really excited to have a panel present information about Woodcraft folks changing approach to international youth work. We'll be looking at international camps during uh, before and post Second World War and the changes to how we have done international development work and also a little piece about Woodcock folk and the anti-apartheid movement uh, which I'm really excited to hearing about and Aggie's already mentioned our camps for all so there will be one during the October half term at Lockerbrook which is open to all young people, those who attend regular Woodcraft Folk groups and those who are new to the folk. It's all part of our agenda to increase and widen participation and give as many children as possible a Woodcraft Folk experience. There are other events and you can see them on the Woodcraft Folk website under calendar, where you will also find the information for the Common Ground Friends and Family Day. So if you know people who would like to join us for the day, do direct them there. And then it's really about how you can help. There's always an ask. Today we all live on social media and it's such a way of getting our message out to more people. So we ask you to carry on sharing, whether or not it's on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, but you'll notice in recent years, we've really stepped up the level of social media marketing that we're doing. And we are finding that it works to attract new families to our new groups. We've started to use LinkedIn. So come and join us there if you use that platform. As always, Woodcroft Oak is a movement, it's a network of individuals, so please encourage your friends and families to volunteer or become a supporter. Um, I mentioned our Centre Volunteers already, but um, if you find that you have some spare time, and I appreciate that some people will and some people won't, consider volunteering at one of our centres or perhaps become a buddy to a new group. Aggie mentioned earlier that inquiries for new groups is increasing now that COVID restrictions have uh, been removed. Uh, but we all know that it's not an easy task to set up a new group. So if there are people who are willing to share their experience, to be on the end of a telephone, uh, or even to maybe go along to a session or welcome volunteers to, to shadow them in a session in their own group, every little bit of support is appreciated. I mentioned earlier that CC is working to encourage more unions to affiliate. So if you are a member of a union and you feel that you can share contacts of your local branch, please do get in touch. Uh, we're also working with Mid Counties Co-op uh, around their uh, payroll giving scheme. And we're keen to work with other people's employers to explore what their corporate, corporate social responsibility offer might be and how Woodcraft folk can potentially benefit whether that's in in-kind support and technical support, whether or not that's in donations of equipment that people don't need in their workplace anymore, or whether that's more financial. Um, we are looking to make sure that we can broaden the resources that we've got in as many ways as possible. And that new fundraising role that CC has taken on is really given us added capacity to try and grow that uh, capacity within our organization. 
I think we're now asking if you have any questions for us. I feel that Aggie and I have gone really fast tonight, um, but maybe we'd all just talk quickly. Um, if you've got any questions, by all means, unmute yourself and ask. Now would be a good time. Whilst you're thinking of your questions, I'm going to pass to Aggie to do a big, big thank you. We like saying thank you. I feel like I say thank you a lot, but also I am thankful. Um, so it is genuine. Um, yes, so thank you all for listening um, and for participating and coming along um, to our supporters update. We have a question. Whereabouts is Highgate Centre? Um, exactly. Cobbledon, Calderdale. Uh, for those who don't know it, I'm going to say it's between Leeds and Bradford. Um, but there is uh, the nearest train station is Hebden Bridge. It's near uh, the canal, just off the Pennine Way. It's quite beautiful. Lovely. I always thought it was near Manchester. Well, it, um, it, I mean, Compared to where you live, Aggie, it is near Manchester, uh, yeah. but it's further east than that. Nice. Um, well, I'm glad we're all learning new things. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for participating um, in the supporters update. And a final thank you um, from both myself and Debs for everyone who supported and donated to the Champions for Children campaign. Uh, we're really pleased with how it went um, and looking forward to doing it again. Cool. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop <laughs> the recording now and then you can all